Hi there, Sanjay Gangal from GIS Cafe. I'm here with Brent Howard, president of Compass Data. Uh, hello, Brent. How are you doing, Sanjay? Another another uh, GeoEnt Rodeo here. Here we are. Yes, uh, 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 the show has been uh, really uh, good, well attended. Uh, 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 what do you think of the show? Uh, I think it's great. It's nice to have it here in the nation's capital, and uh, we get a little easier for some of our folks to attend and give us a little more uh, visibility, I think, this year. Uh, uh, that's great. Uh, so tell us uh, briefly about Compass Data for some of our readers who may not know about Compass Data. Compass Data uh, started over 20 years ago as uh, primarily a survey company doing uh, ground control surveys for the remote sensing, the aerial and satellite imagery business, and has evolved over time into a content provider. Uh, we have uh, collected ground control for some of the large commercial internet map providers you're familiar with mm -hmm. and you use every day. We make their product better by using the ground control to, for QA, QC or enhancement of their products. And when we did that, I made a decision a number of years ago that we would own the data and license it to them so they could use over and over again. But um, the data itself would be accumulated in a archive that would be available quickly over and over again to other clients as well. So it's, it's, we are the largest provider of a commercially available ground control uh, in the globe as we people tell us and uh, we have 34,000 points around the globe in the archive and growing daily. And these points have all been used for AT. They're proven, tested and uh, used by our clients and guaranteed to work and if not we replace them or get new points for them. So we have an archive of new data, as, of data in the archive at different accuracy levels and then we also do new collect projects on a daily basis and we're working on federal contracts currently on NAEP with the Hexagon uh, Quantum and CERTEX and we're also working on USGS projects and, uh, and other projects for FEMA as well. We are did start this year uh, working with our partner Wolpert who's the prime on commercial airborne and are providing ground control for their support at the NGA as well. But one of the reasons we're here at this show is the uh, a lot of the ground control the NGA has is, is highly classified and not easily shared across the community. It's great data from our understanding and it should be kept in its current state, but we're looking for the NGA to bring in commercially available data to help the contractors, especially on the foundation contract and in other areas, have a source of commercially available control to build the pre better products the NGA wants. And with our reach around the globe, it would be very helpful to them to have our data to uh, build the map of the world. And uh, we would basically a foundation layer that they could help improve and bring other data sets together to uh, meet their goal of, of mapping the globe. Yeah, now, uh, how many uh, ground control points do you have and uh, how accurate they are? We have 34,000 in the archive. If you go to our website at compassdatainc.com, you can see them live there in an, in an ESRI base expression and click on the data and there are five different categories of accuracy from one to uh, 10 centimeter, 10 to 20, 20 to 50 centimeter, and then on up to submeter, and even for mid-range uh, photogrammetry, something you can see in low res as well. So we've, over the years, the product line has developed to match up with the sensors that are out there that need some type of control to tie them together. And we're, uh, we're currently collecting somewhere between four to 500 new points a month that go into this archive. So it's growing in different parts of the globe. Uh, it's, it's quite active. Okay. And uh, uh, you also have some aviation product offering? Uh... Yes, this last year we have, uh, on April 1st actually, a very lucky day for me, uh, we, we received our DO200A certification by the FAA to provide geospatial data to support avionics. Now, there are only a few people in the globe that have this certification. Uh, and what it allows us to do is we certified our collection of ground control and our certification of ortho imagery over airports. So we're now producing, again, as a content company, 
airport data that is used to build products like AMDBs, ETODs, and more authoritative type mapping products used by the aviation community. We currently have close to 350 airports in the archive today that are current. And as part of our certification, we have to keep those airport images current. So anytime there's new construction or build, we're updating that information. We work with our partner uh, as an IPP partner for Digital Globe and use satellite imagery to produce those orthos. The 85 centimeter orthos support a one meter aviation mapping product, which is really the future of where aviation is going. Past uh, and current, a lot of the current data is five meter product. So this, this is a multitude advancement of the capability to build these maps that improve situational awareness and safety for aviation. And uh, who are the primary users for this? We have uh, clients in the business jet market that are building uh, avionics and cockpits where they, if you've seen a cockpit lately, there are a lot of glass and a lot of screens. They're putting the data in the actual cockpit, the mapping data, and our base helps uh, our uh, clients and build that data set. And then there's some commercial uh, providers out there Air, commercial uh, builders of aircraft that are using the product well, but I can't announce that yet. Okay. Uh, you also have a couple of software offerings. Can you tell us about them? Yes, yeah, since last year we uh, purchased the assets of Spatial Information Solution, which was a, a technology spin out from Mississippi State University. And they had a couple products that were uh, QA, QC products for the aerial and also the LIDAR imagery. They're accuracy analysts and topo analysts. So we stood up a new product line at Compass Data that's Compass V and V, verification, validation. And the two software products are Compass AA and Compass TA. And uh, we're just, uh, we've made some uh, improvements to the products. We're getting ready for a new release here right before the Esri conference. They will coordinate with that for our clients. And the uh, main goal was to stabilize the product and move it forward in a new direction. And uh, I think you'll see more of that coming here shortly. And uh, our clients include people like the USDA, the USGS, uh, the commercial flyers such as uh, uh, Wilpert uses it, uh, a lot of the commercial flyers use it, Quantum and, and others. And the product itself, we purchased the, uh, the rights to the, to the IP as well as the global rights to the three patents that were part of the company. So we're looking forward to uh, enhancing and growing that in business and supporting the existing clients we have and, uh, and growing it into other areas. Okay, uh, 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 you also uh, uh, did a recent uh, uh, Denali Summit uh, and, and, and uh, uh, did some ground control points there. Uh, can you tell us about that? Well, uh, one, of, one of our uh, longtime field folks that had traveled the globe, I think he's worked on five continents for us, Blaine Horner was also a guide up at Denali uh, for a few years and, and uh, he, he'd done a lot of mountain climbing on Mount McKinley and uh, he was talking with our friends at Dewberry and, and uh, the USGS and convinced them that he should go up there and measure the summit of Denali, Mount McKinley as, as we from a federal perspective call it. And uh, so we received a small contract and they left on the 15th of June. And I just heard today that they're planning to summit today. And they're uh, with our partners on the federal side and, and the commercial side, plan to have a fairly long occupancy time and determine an accurate elevation of the summit. And this is in coordination with the USGS, uh, NOAA and the NGS, University of Alaska Fairbanks and the National Park Service on, on the government side. And then Dewberry is our prime contractor on the Gypsy contract to uh, arrange this uh, opportunity. And then we have some commercial partners that have helped us out, uh, one being Trimble we went to, to tell us what would be the best equipment to work at high altitude and, and very low temperatures over a long period of time. Also, DeLorme has helped us and uh, we're tracking the expedition. If you go to our website and look under the Denali expedition, you can see the progress of the expedition in near real time. And then Mountain Trips is the organization in, uh, up in Alaska that does the logistics on the mountain that has also helped us with this. And the last survey of the mountain was done in 1953. And uh, more recent IFSAR data that's been collected and as part of the Alaska mapping uh, effort shows about an 85-foot difference in summit. And 
the folks at the USGS and the NGS wanted to uh, take the opportunity to set the record straight. So if we're successful, and uh, it's not always uh, guaranteed you're going to get to the summit because the weather can be pretty nasty at 20,000 feet in Alaska, but uh, we'll bring the data down. Everybody will get the opportunity to analyze it, and I would expect the uh, Department of Interior will announce the result sometime in August for the new elevation. Uh, that's great. Uh, you know, any closing thoughts or anything else that we didn't cover? Well, uh, we also received uh, this spring our FAA exemption for our 333, and uh, we received that exemption to fly the Trimble UX5 uh, UAS. And uh, we've been doing some research type projects to get used to it. Our goal is to expand into the UAS development in certain niches where people require precision imagery or DEMS being created from the sensors. And uh, so we're starting to do more of that work in coordination with our organization Compass Tools that has the opportunities to sell the UX5. We'll be able to provide the service or sell or support clients that will buy it. We're also using some copters and also another fixed wing product as well. So I see in the future uh, Compass Data will be have a niche in the UAS business of precision imagery uh, elevation products collected by drones for small to medium sized products. Uh, great. Uh, check out compassdatainc.com for a lot more information about Compass Data's uh, um, uh, offerings. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brent, for coming over talking to us. Have a great show. Thanks, Sanjay. It's always good to see you.